Live. News 8 at 5 starts now. Heavy fire. Breaking developments tonight. A deadly plane crash at Bradley International Airport. Bradley Tower to all responding vehicles, no matter where you are, proceed to the craft via the quickest way available. A vintage World War II bomber slams into a maintenance shed, bursting into flames. 13 people on board and one on the ground hurt. There are fatalities. My heart really goes out to, you know, the families. These are, um... Husbands and wives and brothers and sisters and children and all members of our Connecticut family. And tonight we know at least five people are dead. Nine others taken to Hartford, St. Francis and Bridgeport hospitals. Two members of the Simsbury Fire Department were on board. Their condition is not known yet. A member of the Air National Guard on board who was on that plane is expected to be okay. We have live team coverage for you tonight from the airport to the hospital. Witnesses and how other passengers at Bradley are being impacted. We start with News 8's Samaya Hernandez. Samaya. Well, the NTSB is here on scene now. We expect to be hearing from them at about 6 o'clock, but the latest is that at least five people have perished in this crash this morning. Several were sent to hospitals fighting for their lives. Mod 4837, we're staying on this present heading. 2 you could uh, proceed however necessary for runway 6. A vintage World War II aircraft took off from Bradley Airport at 9.45 Wednesday morning. Five minutes in, it was obvious something was horribly wrong. All responding vehicles have to the crash site, quickest way possible. The aircraft indicated to the tower that they were experiencing some type of problem. The B-17, operated by Massachusetts-based Collings Foundation, was on tour at Bradley. Three crew members and 10 passengers who paid for a short 15-minute ride were on board. When the plane couldn't get much altitude, circled around and lost control, hitting a de-icing and maintenance facility less than 10 minutes after takeoff. The crash sparked a massive fire and dark smoke plume that could be seen for miles. At least one person, civilian, on the ground in the maintenance uh, facility. Right now, my heart really goes out to, you know, the families who are waiting. And uh, we're going to give them the best information we can as soon as we can. Airport firefighters, state police, and first responders from across the area rushed to the scene. Two helicopters flew victims to hospitals. We have a crash. We have a burn. Victims are very difficult to identify. We don't want to make a mistake. The airport closed for three and a half hours, but runway six remained closed. The National Transportation and Safety Board will be taking over the investigation and determining the cause. They will be beginning immediately with a team of at least eight. They certainly regard this crash as a major tragedy in light of the fatalities and the injuries that were caused. And that Connecticut National Guard member was sent to Hartford Hospital. We're working to learn more on their condition. As for the two firefighters from Simsbury, we are told that they have survived. Again, working to learn more on their condition. We expect to hear more from the NTSB and officials when they at the press conference at 6 o'clock. Now, that NTSB investigation led by a woman named Jennifer Hamadi. She is from Connecticut. And again, that update will come at 6 o'clock. For now, we're live in Windsor Locks. I'm Samaya Hernandez, News 8. Thank you so much. At least six of the victims were taken to Hartford Hospital, some of them in critical condition. News 8's Noel Gardner is there live with that part of the story. Noel. Darren and Ann, the Hartford Hospital tells me they train for a mass casualty response every Wednesday, so they're repaired for anything. Our thoughts and prayers for all involved and their family members. Seconds after the plane crash at Bradley International Airport, Hartford Hospital had plenty of operating rooms on hand, each with a team ready to take patients at a moment's notice. We notified emergency medicine, trauma surgery, the ORs, the blood bank, neurosurgery, orthopedics. We notified our colleagues at both Children's Hospital and the Bone and Joint Institute. We had plenty of ORs on hold ready to go each with our team ready to take a patient if we needed to 
at a moment's notice. The hospital received six patients. Three were in critical condition, two were moderately injured, and one minimally injured. Patients were brought in by ambulance. One was flown by LifeStar. Two of the victims were transported to Bridgeport Hospital's burn unit. As a level one trauma center, Hartford Hospital has the resources for anything that comes in the door. All the teams are ready for this because we train for these types of multiple casualty incidents. Dr. Kenneth Robinson talks about the challenges. Getting the team together, which we practice and drill, so that happened relatively seamlessly this morning. And then information from the scene, which happened really well as well, from CMED and through our communications. And then getting the, finding out how many patients we're going to get in. And they tell me they prepare for everything. They had social workers and chaplains also on hand. I'm reporting live tonight in Hartford. Noel Gardner, News 8. Noel, thank you. A lot of people at the airport and locals in Windsor Lock saw that plane go down and burst into flames. News 8's Jocelyn Mementa talked to witnesses. She's live at Bradley. Jocelyn. Ann and Darren, I'm at the spectator area on Route 20 right across from the deadly scene. You can still see that investigators are still on scene and the runway still closed off. We have been watching planes arriving and departing from the other runway since around 1.45 this afternoon. Uh, what happened here has folks shaken but what, by what they ha saw. Shortly before 10 a.m., Gerald Sear was inside this McDonald's in the East Granby side of Bradley International Airport. Big big cloud, you know, and it was just a big cloud. When he looked up and saw the World War II vintage B-17 in the air. Uh, we're looking at it, I said, that plane's going to go down because it was going down steady. And uh, I said, that plane's going down. And I'm no more than said that, and it just disappeared like that, and there was a big puff of smoke. I knew, we knew it had crashed. Karen Novakowski lives nearby. I said, I've lived here 55 years. I have a sister on the other side of town. Planes go over all the time. I've never seen anything that low in my life. She was in her bedroom at the time the plane was passing by. I looked out my bedroom window and I could see how low it was and it was coming towards my house. I actually rolled out of my bed because it's lower than I've ever seen a plane and I've lived in town for 55 years. And we've had, I don't, they don't need you to come over my house that much. I rolled out of my bed and I looked out the window. I could see the wing of the plane and I thought this plane's not going to make it. It was backfiring. The cloud of smoke could be seen for miles. Emergency crews responding from all over Cromwell, Newington, Granby, to name a few. At least one responder was sent to a local hospital to be treated for minor injuries. I'm Jocelyn Momenta, live from Bradley International Airport. Back to you. All right, Jocelyn, thank you. That deadly plane crash impacting operations and other passengers at the airport, too. Bradley was shut down for hours this morning. It is now open again, but not at full capacity. Flights are still delayed, canceled. News 8's Mario Boone is live at Bradley with that information. Mario. Well, what a tragic day this has been here at Bradley International. But finally, some good news as the big boards lit up with green, which means flights are on time, and the security checkpoint lines also moving once again. Airport shutdown. It's just frustrating. I'll stay in a hotel <laughs> and go when they have a flight. First they canceled the flight, an hour, then two hours. Now they canceled them all day. Air traffic in and out of Bradley International grounded for hours Wednesday following this deadly plane crash. I've never seen anything like this. I will not get the faces of the people out of my head because I personally saw them on the ground and up close. The domino effect, dozens of cancellations and delays, and thousands of passengers like Don Hust of Cincinnati stranded. Tomorrow, all the flights are booked. We're flying southwest, so the first available flight we get out was noon on Friday. Wow, so you're stuck for two days now. Yes. Some folks forced to wait it out on the airport floor as ticket agents scrambled. Thought I was going to get on a flight, got canceled. Nancy Burney was headed down south to visit the grandkids. And now I'm just trying to rebook to go see my grandchildren in North Carolina. Finally, a glimmer of hope just after 1 p.m. as TSA checkpoint lines reopened. 
And back live here from the airport now, you just heard from a woman in the package there who saw the plane come down, witnessed people actually being pulled out of the aircraft as it was on fire. We'll have much more from her next on News 8 at 6. We are live from Bradley International. I'm Mario Boone, News 8. Hi, right, Mario. Thanks. As we said, the plane involved in this crash was a World War II era B-17 bomber. This is some video from when this plane was in Maine just last week, and it has had trouble in the past. It crashed at an air show near Pittsburgh in 1987. That time it overshot the runway. Three people were injured. News 8's Kent Pierce flew on the plane several times. He has some background on it. If I could fit in my uniform again, I'd go right back again. That was the reaction a lot of World War II veterans had when they climbed aboard the 909. For more than 30 years, she brought back memories for old soldiers and made new ones for younger generations. The plane itself never saw combat. She was built just as World War II was ending. For a couple decades, she dropped water on forest fires. Then the Collings Foundation bought her and painted her to look like a famous B-17 from the war. The 909. A uh, little leprechaun thumbing his nose at, uh, at the Germans. That's uh, what that is. Exactly, okay. exactly. And then they just started calling it old 909. Every September, the Collings Foundation would bring its vintage war planes to airports in Connecticut and give the public and the media a chance to hop aboard. They were flying in these things with no pressurization, no oxygen, and no heat. I got to fly in the 909 three times over the years, and I always heard about the cold and the danger of the missions these planes flew because there was always someone on board with amazing memories. I met Chuck from Wolka in 2007. He was a turret gunner on a B-17 flying 30 missions, shooting at German fighters. I know I hit him because I would see pieces fly off. Its size and all those guns earned this kind of bomber the name the Flying Fortress. It helped win the war and save lives. Then for years, the 909 brought back treasured memories for a lot of people. If I could hug this airplane, I would do it. I would give it the biggest hug you ever saw. I'm Kent Pierce, News 8. Wow. The Collings Foundation has issued a statement on today's plane crash. It reads, quote, our thoughts and prayers are with those who were on that flight, and we will be forever grateful to the heroic efforts of the first responders at Bradley. The Collings Foundation flight team is fully cooperating with officials to determine the cause of the crash of the B-17 Flying Fortress, and will comment further when details become known. The town of Windsor under a health advisory after that fiery crash at Bradley. It's because the firefighting foam they use contains cancer-causing chemicals, PFAS, used to put out the flames there. And the foam, apparently, some of it wound up in the Farmington River today. The State Department of Public Health says people in the area should not take fish from the river. They also should avoid any contact with that foam, which could be on the river, river banks, storm drains, manholes, or catch basins. The health advisory will remain in place while officials evaluate the potential impact to the watershed. All right, other news for you tonight. Two Connecticut State Troopers are headed for prison for badly beating a man. We'll have the latest on that. Also, the Bernie Sanders presidential campaign on hold tonight after a trip to the hospital. We'll tell you what happened. Joe. We're saying goodbye to summer. Got up to 90 in some spots this afternoon. Here comes the cold front right now with some showers. How cool will it get? And some more rain in the 8-day forecast coming up. You're watching News 8 at 5.30 with Ann Nyberg, Darren Kramer, and Joe Fury. We're going to give them the best information we can as soon as we can in an honest way. Our hearts are broken for you right now. We're doing everything we can. Governor Ned Lamont was very emotional as he spoke about the families of the victims in the Bradley plane crash. Right now, we know at least five people have died. Many are injured. All right, let's check out uh, the latest now. Bob Wilson is live at the Sheridan out at the airport uh, where we're getting uh, the new information. Bob, what do you got for us? Yeah, well, we can actually see this. The site's just around the corner from here, but right now the NTSB is on the scene. They have arrived, FBI, Homeland Security, State Police. They're all gathering together, getting the latest information, and they're going to have a news conference for us probably in the next 45 minutes to an hour, so we'll have some new information then. But here's what we know right now. There were 13 people on board the aircraft, three crew members, and there were 10 passengers. And among those, there were two survivors tonight taken to Simsbury, uh, there were Simsbury firefighters. Those two survivors were taken to the hospital along with a Connecticut Air National Guard member. 
And they were taken to a whole different list of hospitals from St. Francis to Hartford Hospital to Bridgeport Burn Unit. And uh, they're saying right now they can confirm that five people have passed in this air crash. And they're saying that number is a moving target and it's difficult because of the situation that it's in. There are fatalities of which I will not tell you the number yet because during this investigation it is far too early um, to discuss those. Um, only because we have a crash, we have a burn. Victims are very difficult to identify. We don't want to make a mistake. And it is a B-17 World War II plane. It's part of a traveling show where people can come in and fly on it, pay to fly on it, and find out what it was like to fly back in the World War II era bomber. Now, interestingly enough, we were talking to a lot of the people here at the airport that saw the fireball go up and the crash site, and they said, you know, it was difficult to fathom at first, and then when they started realizing what happened, the emotion came over them. As you're the governor, very emotional right there. It is a very somber mood here at the airport. That's what's going on here at Bradley International Airport. I'm Bob Wilson reporting live. Back to you. All right, Bob, thank you. This is video from when that B-17 bomber involved in the crash visited Maine just last week. It was owned by the Collings Foundation. That group keeps vintage planes up in the air so we can all see what it was like 70 years ago. This plane is no stranger to crashes either. In 1987, it overshot a runway during an air show near Pittsburgh. Three people were hurt in that incident. All right, we're going to check out the weather. Some showers are moving through the state. Raindrops on the lens in Middletown. Behind this, a lot cooler air. Let's get right to Joe Fury. Joe. Hi, right, Darren. Thanks. And yeah, we're talking a good 30 to 35 degrees cooler for the day tomorrow. So get prepared for that and get prepared to get a, a much uh, more colorful landscape. This is Mohawk Mountain. Very green looking right now. There's Hartford raining down to 75. And well, Middletown, yeah, the raindrops are coming down. And there's the front. You can see it entering in towards southern Connecticut now as we have, well, highs today that got up near 90 degrees, like New Haven and at, at Danbury. So temperatures are starting to drop now into the 60s in northern Connecticut. So once this front goes off to the south, temperatures fall quickly this evening. Wet out there right now across parts of Litchfield, Hartford counties. A little heavier rain band into the Westfield section of Middletown at the moment. And a couple of more heavier batches are starting to show up uh, into the south and east. So. Showers into this evening, we drop into the 60s fast, 40s and lower 50s to start tomorrow, out the door tomorrow with the jacket and the umbrella. Temperatures in the 50s all day long, and there'll be some showers and periods of rain to deal with. How's Friday in the weekend? We'll take a look. Eight-day forecast coming up. Some breaking news to tell you about at this hour out of New Haven. Sources within the school district have confirmed to News 8 that Dr. Carol Burks is out as superintendent. The Board of Education is meeting right now to vote on a severance package. An interim superintendent will also be appointed. Burks had been under intense scrutiny over her handling of the latest bus stop debacle at the start of the school year and her plan to eliminate teacher positions to close a budget gap. New at 5.30, a man armed with a chainsaw tries to cut through bulletproof glass, all while a gas station clerk and customer were inside that store in New Haven. News 8's Stephanie Simone spoke with a witness and has the story. You are looking at the damage from a chainsaw-wielding man. Right away you think of a movie, you know, why is it happening at jury show? It was crazy, scary. The witness wanted to hide his face for his safety, but he says this ordeal started Tuesday night. You can see the man getting angry, screaming at him over a charge on his credit card. He was just banging the, you know, counter and you know, using the F-bombs on him. And he was just like, oh, come on, call the cop, call the cop. This is video of when he walked out and drove away. But it didn't stop after that. The clerk says that the guy came back, had a chainsaw with him and a mask, so he did some quick thinking and locked the door. Starting up to the window to cut the door. And I was like, what are you doing, man? Their cameras were down for when he started cutting the bulletproof glass. But the clerk recorded the audio on his smartwatch and sent it to us. Police came and he gave them his license plate number. That's how officers arrested 32-year-old Colin Gogren of Wallingford. I'm, I'm glad Jerry has a bulletproof glass and that's why that could save my life, I would say. Gogren is being arraigned for attempted burglary, threatening and carrying a dangerous weapon. In New Haven, Stephanie Simone, News 8.
This breaking news, a former Dallas police officer convicted of murder will serve 10 years behind bars. It took the jury just over an hour to decide Amber Geiger's sentence. She was found guilty of killing her neighbor last September after she walked into his apartment. She says she thought she was in her own apartment and that Jean the, was an intruder. Earlier today, the jury heard emotional testimony from both Jean's father and Geiger's mother, who was called on as a character witness. She always would tell me she wish she could take in his place. She feels very bad about it. I'll never see him again. And I want to see him. I still want to see him. Geiger had been facing up to life in prison. Prosecutors are not done yet. In the case of Patriot owner Robert Kraft and accusations of sex, a sex act at a Florida strip mall, last May a judge ruled video of Kraft in the day spa could not be used in court. Now those prosecutors are back in court saying the judge was wrong. The paperwork filed this week just before a deadline that would have probably had the 78-year-old's misdemeanor charge dropped. October is Domestic Violence Awareness Month. New Haven is coming together this afternoon or came together this afternoon to honor survivors and remember victims. The 20th annual Sound of Hope was held at Long Wharf Pier. People gathered to toss flowers into the harbor in remembrance of the victims. The goal was also to raise awareness about domestic violence. The event was organized by BH Cares, the umbrella center for domestic violence services. New Britain has been known as the hardware city for decades now, made famous by Stanley Black & Decker. But now a big part of the old Stanley complex is being turned into a huge energy and innovation park. Our chief political correspondent, Mark Davis, takes a look. This facility in this location, in this building that we're standing in, will become the largest indoor fuel cell uh, uh, installation in the world. This long vacant part of the old Stanley Works complex was triple reinforced during World War II in case of attack and turns out to be the perfect fit for a Connecticut-made 19.98-megawatt fuel cell power plant that will provide the energy for a billion-dollar high-performance computer data center in an adjacent empty Stanley Works building that is expected to eventually employ several thousand people and become the largest taxpayer in the city of New Britain. This will be the data heart for um, Google and Amazon and Microsoft. You know, it's amazing. This is the cloud. The existing buildings are perfectly configured to house row upon row of high-speed computer cabinets. It's making a positive reuse of an urban site um, that uh, would be a challenge for remediation, so we're really thrilled to see that occurring. This center is going to become one of our largest taxpayers virtually overnight. That is absolutely going to transform the city of New Britain in and of itself. Some people have been working for this day for nearly a decade, but now this giant, privately funded innovation center complex will be moving forward fast. They expect the first phase of this huge project to be up and running by the end of next year. In New Britain, Mark Davis, News 8. And we have a sad update tonight on the breaking news we've been telling you about. A B-17 plane crash at Bradley International Airport. Yeah, the official death toll has just gone up. News 8's Bob Wilson is live at the airport with more. Bob. Yeah, we're still waiting that news conference, but the death toll has gone from five to seven. A very heavy, somber mood here at the airport as investigators still try to put all the pieces together. We're waiting more word on exactly what happened. NTSB is here with the FBI as well as Homeland Security, State Connecticut State Police. They're all expected to get together in a news conference in the next half hour, 45 minutes, and we'll have more details then. Keep it right here on News 8. We'll have reports for you with a complete team coverage coming up at 6 o'clock. I'm Bob Wilson reporting live at the airport. Back to you. All right, Thanks, Bob. Bob. Thank you. We'll be watching. Coming up next here, the dangers of taking antidepressants while pregnant. Just ahead on News 8, a new study that shows possible dangers to mother and child. And now mixing two kinds of cleaners at home could make you sick.